105.1. All right, so, excuse me, a few days ago, Mueller had an eight-minute press conference where he said, this was all he, who he was going to say, and uh, the takeaway was that... We're not talking about... Them. All right, the thing that he was most widely quoted saying on the, uh, in the, on the media that I watch is that he said that if Trump could have been exonerated um, from charges of obstructing justice, he would have said so in the report. And he could not say so. I also started reading the Mueller report. I got about 50 pages into part one and I don't know, 20, 30 pages into part two. Part one details, mostly details Russia's actions. And I gotta say, reading what Russia did that they must have had so much fun fucking up our democracy. Because there's a building in St. Petersburg, the headquarters of the IRA, which stands for Internet Research Agency. And they would, all day they would, the guys there, I assume it's mostly guys, would come up with fake, angry American organizations like Miners for Trump and, and Black Fist. And I know from working on a, a talk show where we came up with jokes all day that you, you throw ideas at each other and then you laugh. Um, and it's, it's a really fun job. And, and they're doing the same shit except to subvert American democracy and other state, other nations' democracies too. They make up shit all day and, uh, and it's got to be a fun job. I mean, they, they probably get free beverages and free snacks, which is probably a, a rarity in Russia. And uh, Lance. Um, well, I'm glad you're reading the report. Um, I'm not even sure I trust the report itself, frankly, because it was written by Democrats who were desperate to Trump. But, um, uh, well, the whole first volume details Russia's actions. Uh huh. And, and, you know, Trump isn't exactly peripheral because their actions were designed to do two things to, to make Americans pissed at each other, to be divisive, and to help Trump over Clinton. So, it's mostly about what Russia did, at least as far into it as I am. Mm -hmm. Well, I've heard that they, um, that they thought Clinton would win, and it was just an effort to make uh, Clinton look bad, because they want Americans to hate their leaders. Uh, and each other. Right, which I didn't need this report to tell me. I've always known that. Uh, what I thought you were going to say was that um, he announced that because of the Justice Department's letter uh, where they say that a, a leader can't be, uh, a president can't be indicted, that was the only reason he didn't indict, which is what you said was the reason last week. Well, I mean, he, and then I go ahead. He, I mean, from the word go, they were looking into everything, but there was never an intention to charge the president with anything. I believe, though, there's a lot of, you know, I read a lot of it, and so I mean, it, it, a lot of it just kind of. My eyes skated over it, I got to admit, but that it was given the department of, given his, and I guess his team's understanding of Department of Justice policy um, regarding a sitting president, that um, 
that the idea is you can't have a president who's free to do his job or her job at some um, if they they are in fear of of being charged and prosecuted for stuff, and that so that you, you don't charge them, and if there is something that needs to be looked into, that's the purview of Congress. Well, uh, several things. He announced that, uh, okay, over a year and a half ago, there was, uh, no one had raised that issue. And then Mark Levin, a Republican, a Republican uh, pundit. A pundit raised that issue, and uh, his art. The reason he raised the issue was because he was saying, "Look, this investigation can't go anywhere. There's no reason to be doing it at all uh, because you can't indict the president." So. Uh, it's just a it's just a way of embarrassing him. So uh, he didn't think anybody took that seriously, cool. and now that's being made to be the excuse as to why Mueller didn't indict Trump. But Nixon wasn't indicted for the no, same no. reason. But but wait. So actually, this uh, statute was passed after Nixon in in. Uh, I believe it was probably in uh, response to the experience of Watergate. But um, after he made this announcement, uh, a year and a half later, after Mark Levin raised the issue, we find, Col uh, we find Mueller announcing that that was his reason for not, uh, for, for, uh, not indicting Trump, um, at least uh, that he was aware of that the whole time, and then Barr, so the uh, Barr had to actually walk this back. Barr had to remind Mueller that Mueller had told him in, in three on three separate occasions in front of witnesses that his report had nothing to do with this uh, this. Uh, Department of Justice policy that you can't indict a sitting president. Well, and wait a minute. When when Barr met, reminded Mueller of this, the uh, special counsel, Mueller, his spokesman, and Barr's uh, spokesman had to release a joint statement that afternoon saying that the Mueller investigation had uh, was doing their work regardless of this Justice Department policy. Yeah, doing the work regardless, but still not charging them. Their no, own. no, but, but that it had not affected whether they would charge or not. I don't know. I mean, I read... That they reached their conclusions that the president could not be indicted for colluding with Russia regardless of the uh, Justice Department policy. And the reason I bring this up... I mean, if you're talking about collusion, I'm talking about obstruction of justice. Both. And, and the reason I bring this up is because I heard just a passing 20-second report somewhere during the week saying, yeah, Mueller had to walk that back. And I scoured the internet. I couldn't find anything about it because the Democrats had scrubbed this, uh, had scrubbed the fact, the Democrat media had scrubbed the joint statement. You couldn't find it. It took me 20 minutes to find the joint statement that was released the same day as Barr's press conference, as Mueller's press conference, and the Democrats had hidden it. They hadn't reported it. Because they don't want people to know that Mueller had told Barr that his conclusions not to indict Trump had nothing to do with the Justice Department policy. Mm -hmm. So they fooled you again, Rick. Yeah, but if you read the report, 
the actual report. It has several pages of analysis with legal precedent about what can and can't and can be in, what what a president could be indicted for. For instance, if a president was caught stabbing somebody to death, I believe he could be indicted because that's a separate kind of crime. Unless I misread the report, because I, I I didn't, you know, I did. My fair enough. Fair. Some of this is legal issues, so we wouldn't yeah. be able to understand it anyway. What I have to do is, if you, if you want to argue about this, I go back and I can reread those pages. But the actual report states that Department of Justice policy is that the Mueller at least feels the Department of Justice policy is that he, the president can't be indicted, but. Potential offenses by the president can uh, be the, the, the place for the body to look at that is Congress. Um. Well, if he obstructed justice, then Mueller could have indicted somebody else that worked with him, and he didn't do that either. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't indict anybody in. Trump's circle he for had, obstruction of justice. Well, Trump was, and he didn't indict anybody that Trump knew for colluding with Russia. He, I mean, people got charged with various stuff, and but had they're, nothing they're, to do with colluding with Russia. Not. Uh, we're, we're talking about yes. Oh, we got all right. Well, I mean, when it comes to one part of the analysis was that you can indict or you can investigate that, if, that normally obstruction of justice is surreptitious, but it's still obstruction of justice even if it's done in public. And it, so it lists some of the things that Trump said publicly. Um, and maybe one reason that not so many other people besides Trump were indicted is that Trump was doing most of the uh, what can be understood as obstructing. Yeah, I don't think he was obstructing by statements he made publicly because anybody that was pissed off about a witch hunt would have made those statements. Um, my, I well, no, there's didn't the, respond, but I wanted to get to another issue. But go ahead. Okay, no, you go ahead, because this, discussing the, the technicalities of this, there's, Nobody's going to... Go ahead, your next... All right, well, anyway, season. but, but you see, this is, this is something I've been trying to get you to understand for a while now. And everybody listening has got to understand this. There are 64 million people that voted for Trump. 62 million. Okay. And, and a few hundred thousand. All right. And those people, including myself, are not going to accept a technicality as a reason for you Democrats to, to uh, impeach my president and remove him from office. You see, you if you're going to remove a president from office, it can't be some chicken shit little technicality where you interpret something he said in some speech or to somebody offhandedly and say, aha, now we got you. That's not justice. Well, all right, so the deal is that Trump will almost certainly not be removed from office because no president has ever been impeached and then removed from office because it takes a two-thirds majority of the Senate, which is controlled by the Republicans. But a president can be invested, you can have impeachment hearings, and you can investigate it. And the Mueller report lists 10 or 11 different instances of uh, potential obstruction of justice. So it's not just the public statements, it's no, other it's, stuff. It's those, those, okay, one, those instances are chicken shit. Uh, I'll be happy to go over them with you. The second thing is that um, you... In order to have obstruction of justice, you don't need an underlying no, crime. You, you don't need an underlying crime, but it's chicken shit. 
if you don't have an underlying crime. In other words, you're, you're, you're simply using a technicality. And in other words, if you found a crime and then you said Trump was guilty of obstruction of justice, I'd be right, I'd be right there with you, Rick. I'd say not only is there a crime, but he tried to cover it up. So I don't well, think we have a dis I don't think we have a disagreement here because all we're the, the the things he did, a lot of them did things he said that can be considered potential obstruction of justice. A lot of the things he did were out in the in the open or are well known even if they were private. And our disagreement is over whether they're chicken shit or not. Right. So <clears throat> But, but it, see, my, my point is this, the, what the investigation of the investigators is showing is that this was all a coup by the Democrats, and so anybody being framed like this would be pissed off and say things that uh, a biased lawyer could use against it. And that's just not going to work. That's not a justification for persecuting my president for the next two years All right, until so the election. Let me just say In this. In other words, I, I need, if you're going to persecute my president and use this to try to beat him in 2020, I don't want it to be because this is a sneaky way that you can get it. I want it to be because he really did something. Not because technically there's a route for you to bring up proceedings that you can use in the 2020 election. That to me is not justice. Okay, and that's where we would disagree. Um, right now, f according to the latest count, 58 Congress people out of 435, which is just under one seventh of the House of Representatives say, say they should start impeachment hearings, which is still, that's only 14%. Um, but I want to, let me change subjects a little bit. Real quick, uh, doesn't, doesn't uh, Nadler, who's head of, of, isn't he just using his congressional, Congress should know what's going on with Trump, right? Like, is he's breaking the law, he's breaking, they need to, there's there, the the president's re, re, rejecting all these subpoenas and isn't yeah. that what con do you want to comment on that how they're resisting the well, yeah but any any person or documents that have been subpoenaed by Congress or requested by Congress mm -hmm. uh, Trump's just say it's saying no nobody can show up to testify and we're not going to give you any of these documents and some. Representatives are saying that in, in itself is grounds for impeachment. Mm -hmm. The New York Times, I think, are, today just announced that there are three and a half or four separate investigations into other countries besides Russia that apparently were in that were trying to, to make deals with the Trump team, like. Um, Saudi Arabia, uh, uh, United um, Arab Emirates, I think, mm -hmm. Israel, mm -hmm. um, I don't know, how, five other countries besides Russia were doing, were trying to make deals in an illicit way uh, before the Trump team took office. And is it possible that's why he doesn't want to report his tax reforms? I mean, that's always been a possibility. But so you know, there are dozens of investigations besides the because one of the things that that Mueller did was spin off um, other investigations from the Mueller investigation, and there are currently more than two dozen investigations into Trump and Trump-related affairs going on either in Congress or in places like the. Uh, the, the what you call a district of New York. Mm -hmm. um, but let me change. Do, wait, Blanche, do you want to comment? Um, it, these are 
if other countries were trying to make deals with Trump and he didn't make them, then I don't think that that's fair. I mean, it's, if, if Israel tried to make some deal with Trump, it's not his fault, and especially if he didn't make an illicit deal. But if, if guys like Kushner are actually offering things, because like one of the things that, that the Mueller report goes into and that Flynn got in trouble for was um, saying Obama put sanctions on Russia for fucking with our election after Trump was elected, but while Obama was still president. And Flynn, I think, was one of the go-betweens between the Trump team and Russia to say, please, Russia, don't freak out. When Trump takes over, we're going to, you know, we'll make it so those sanctions don't really fuck you up. So don't, you know, just calm down and don't go crazy in reaction to our, to Obama's saying. And that kind of deal making before your president uh, violates rules. No, it doesn't. Uh, according to true. the Mueller report, it yeah, does. Sure. And according it's to yeah, true. there are rules no. you can't. No. You no. can't. Yep. No. 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 So it's anyway, perfect. you're getting fed a bunch of different stories. No, it's perfectly your... reasonable for the next national security uh, director to call up his uh, his counterpart in Russia. And start talking. That's offering that's, deals ahead of time. No, but the deal, the deal was in America's interest. He didn't want Russia to to slap uh, sanctions on us to do retaliatory measures. In other words, that was what he was supposed to do. Yeah, but no, that that, that means that Trump's people before Trump is president is contravening what the current president. No, is. after the after the election, he wasn't contravening. He wasn't contravening. He was saying... This all happened in, in December 2016. Okay. Trump didn't become president until January I, I understand. I understand. And what happened was uh, we had sanctions on Russia and uh, General Flynn was trying to get the Russians to not uh, retaliate. That's, that's because in 30 days they were going to try to open new negotiations. I would hope that my future uh, national security guy would do that. That was American yeah, interest. Except it's illegal according no, to the It's not right. illegal because um, that's what you're talking about is a violation of the Logan Act. The Logan Act is when somebody that uh, is not in office purports to interfere with negotiations uh, that, uh, uh, that the current president was making. And it's not considered a violation of the Logan Act when you're going to take office in three weeks because you're going to be the new person. And you're just getting it stuck. Considered. No, but it isn't. Because I'll tell you why. Because nobody's ever been prosecuted for the Logan Act. They're just making this shit up and you believe it. All right, so let me move on. Well, to the next last, week. lastly, for Blanche, Wait, why is I, Trump declining on all these subpoenas? Because what does he have to hide? Because Trump gave 1.4 million uh, papers to the Mueller investigation. Don't interrupt me, Rick. Mm -hmm. He had this guy McGann uh, spoke with the Mueller investigation for 30 hours. So did Jared Kushner. And uh, 30 hours is a long time to get all your questions answered. And I think Trump is doing what any normal person would do, especially the head of one of the branches of government, and say, you know what? You've had two years. You've investigated uh, 1.4 million documents. You've, you've talked with everybody here. Every, nothing, was, nothing was held back. You none of my stuff none of my back. people none of his people were held back. They all spoke to him at great length. And don't interrupt me. Rick. And what Trump is doing is saying, you know what? This is becoming uh, obsessive and abusive. We've we've gone through everything you wanted to go through. Mueller has ended his investigation. You have not uh, started impeachment hearings. 
And I think that, uh, he, I'm talking for Trump, we've had enough. You, you've, you've been looking for me to collude with Russia for two years. It turns out that, uh, that, there's, that there's, there's plenty of evidence that the FBI and the CIA framed Trump, and, and they're getting fed up with it. And they're just saying to hell with it. And, and, and we're a co-equal branch of government. And you don't have the right to persecute us like this for the next two years. Don't interrupt me. So that's the reason. Now I have more to say. Yeah, but now I get I, You know, I can, they can haul me in on charges of fucking my dog and talk to me for 30 hours and without me answering any questions about whether I fucked my dog. Just because people came in, the Mueller report says explicitly that they were hampered in their investigation because people either didn't tell the truth or didn't respond, didn't give answers to questions. Okay. Rick, that's their problem. At this point, well, then, 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 Mueller, like then Mueller should never close shop. He should have said, you know what, we're going to investigate you uh, for two more years. Well, it, it, it was up to them to be, uh, uh, it's up to them. And, and I personally don't even believe that. Well, I think the Trump administration was incredibly cooperative with them. But beyond that, my, my point is, is that enough is enough. Nobody, this is no longer serving the interests of the American people. This has just become a way for the Democrats who have gotten away with murder for two years. First, they framed a Trump, and now they're going to uh, harass him for the next two years and create a circus so that the American people will vote against it. Was Watergate and, and a circus? Or the Watergate water? started with an actual crime wreck. They caught burglars that had been sent by the Nixon administration. In this case, the crime began when the FBI illegally surveilled Trump. So Russia, now forget Trump for a second, Russia started subverting um, America. I mean, well, you and I kind of agree that Russia's always tried to subvert America, but Russia became began, according to the Mueller report, began this concerted effort to fuck us up via social media in 2014. They spent a couple hundred thousand dollars on it, Rick. We spent ten times that much when Obama tried to subvert the election of Netanyahu in Israel. Uh, so, go after, go after Obama for that. I don't see anybody charging him with that. But the deal is, the, well, but, but, the, but, according but, to the Mueller report, an estimated 126 million Americans were exposed to fake posts from Americans that actually came from Russia. For instance, I remember one, I, would, I was exposed to it, and I was infuriated by this, there was one Twitter uh, feed called Tennessee GOP that was uh, claimed to be the unofficial account of the Tennessee Republicans. And they would say the stuff that got me so pissed off and I'd be on there like tweeting back at them and calling them, you know, all sorts of stuff. And it turns out they had nothing to do with the Tennessee Republicans, that it was straight out of Russia. And I was one of near of half of adult Americans who were exposed to this really? stuff. That, so how much they spent that, that what you're saying is the Republicans were attack were making Republicans look bad too. Huh? They were no they were pissing People are. They, no, the they were making Republicans look bad by your report just now. Uh, so no, so I were, guess they were attacking Trump's people too. They weren't attacking them. They were saying shit that would piss off liberals. They were winding up. They were trolling the liberals via... And they were I mean, they did both sides. They got everybody pissed off. Okay, and, but this has nothing to do with persecuting Trump. But you said... There has to be an underlying crime. Well, there was. There's plenty of underlying crime Rick, with Rick, regard to Russia. Rick, Mueller, Mueller indicted those officers in Russian intelligence over a year. Ago. Yeah, but Mueller said he couldn't prove that he was not guilty. No, no. Wait a minute. Please stop. He already indicted the Russians on that True. over a year ago. But that you has, just said you're saying Watergate began. 
Yeah, but it has nothing to do with Trump, Rick. Yeah, but you can't persecute my president because because Russians did something that Mueller uh, indicted them for. That's not fair. That's not the there's the the investigation had two major parts, volume one and volume two. Mm -hmm. you turn away from me more. Yeah, I, I got to get up and get. I got to move on to the next topic. Which I wanted to this. move on to the next topic too. All right, so <laughs> I picked up this book at the library. Wait, not, wait a minute, you got to start that one. I get to start the next topic. Well, this relates to this is a continuation. All right, fine. You go right. ahead. So I think cooperative I am with this. Yeah. Liberal. So here's the deal. I picked up this book at the library without high expectations for it because I figured it would be full of like, insp I don't read help, self-help books, you know, striving and... You're right in front of the pole. All right. It's Michelle Baum, Obama's no, autobiography. I'm sorry, but put it on the light. The, the, the picture. Under the light, you got to pull it back. There you go, thank you. Michelle Obama's autobiography. And I... Low expectations. I thought it would be full of like, you know, inspirational things, and and actually, I'm not that far into it, but it's full of specifics about her life. It's actually she writes about her life. You know, she she was a striving girl in a not great neighborhood in a not rich family in Chicago, and she worked hard. And she at this point she just got into Princeton. But it's 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 well written. I'm enjoying it, and it made me think about face value. Um, and at face value, when you when you look at the Obamas, they look like upstanding people. At face value, at first glance, at second glance. Um, you know, nobody from the Obama administration was indicted. You, know, you, you might want to bring up the IRS, but that's not. That's a but it, the, nobody from the actual administration was indicted, and they look like you know, like to use a not right word. They look like a classy family and not a, a crime family. And then you look at Trump at face value, and he's had a long history of stuff that doesn't look good. And this is long before, now you can claim that the media are painting Trump as bad now that he, he's, he was the Republican candidate for president, and is now the, the Republican president, and it's a liberal media. But the deal is that the media was saying, were saying that Trump was bad for decades before he ran for president. And during most of those decades, it was pretty much assumed that he was liberal on a lot of stuff, and, and he, we didn't come out as a Republican. I think he was a Democrat, possibly, for much of those decades. I mean. People started writing about him and his family in the 70s. And much of what was written is not, does not reflect well on his integrity. But it wasn't a witch hunt for Trump the candidate or for Trump the politician, because he wasn't. And for a while, I was on his side, where because he was in this feud with Rosie O'Donnell, who fucked over my wife, Carol, who had a product that should have been shown on the Rosie show, and then Rosie fucked her with this product, and then the product, that was the last chance for this product to be successful. And it didn't happen, because Rosie was kind of an a-hole. And so the enemy of my enemy is my friend, and Trump is in this feud with Rosie O'Donnell, and I think he's kind of an a-hole, but at least he's pointing out that Rosie is an a-hole. And, but, so if you take everything at face value, I think to some extent, you can judge books by their covers. I, you want me to believe that there's a secret, that Obama is the head of a secret conspiracy to, 
to have America lose wars and to that he's a secret that you know I don't know if you believe he's a secret Muslim but he's got all these secret agendas and that there's a secret war against Trump but if you take things that people aren't that deep and if you take people at face value Trump with his involvement in 5,000 lawsuits many of which are for stiffing people contractors working for him and with his 10,000 misstatements and lies and the Obamas with like zero indictments that I think there's some value and meaning to that that not everything is a secret conspiracy that's the opposite of what you see when you look at these people all right um, you believe in a lot of freaking wait a minute you told me are, are you I'm done. Now you now you say a bunch of shit. Okay. First of all, can you get in the pose? Yeah. All right. So, um, Rick, you're a typical Democrat in that, and I I know this because I used to be a Democrat, and I know that Democrats uh, favor style over substance. Okay. So if, like for example, they used to love Robert Kennedy, and uh, there was a fellow named Mayor Lindsay, I remember. Democrats now they like Beto O'Rourke, and they like hold on, what you and they Beto like this. Probably like twelfth among twenty three. I, I understand. You said you wouldn't interrupt me. Yeah, but we nobody likes Beto O'Rourke right now. Well, they did for quite a while. Uh, they like uh, Cortez. Um, and the reason Democrats do this is because they're very superficial people. They don't really understand what's going on. And so they favor style over substance. Like if a candidate is good looking or well spoken or went to Harvard, then they really like that candidate. You, I remember last, earlier in the, in the show, you were saying how much you liked uh, Cortez because she had such beautiful eyes. They were very <laughs> impressive eyes. Wait, the, no, I didn't talk about You her. did. You talked about her eyes. I was, bro I was okay. moved. And, um, and, and the, the thing I've been trying to convince you for a while is that even though Obama was very uh, kind of well-spoken and very well-dressed and, and had a sort of a a stylish manner, he caused us to lose the Iraq war and led to slavery being brought back to uh, Libya. Uh, 200,000 people died at the hands of ISIS because of uh, Obama. And he made a deal with Iran that would ultimately give them a nuclear bomb that they could use on us. He did nothing to stop China. He used the IRS to harass his political opponents, uh, which is the most anti-democratic thing you could do. He um, was basically a, now it's turning out, that he may have authorized all the spying on the Trump campaign. Uh, but you like him because he and Michelle are such stylish people. Well, and and so what I, what I wanna, what I wanna say, because I'm not finished talking. Fine is that I don't choose my leaders based on how they physically appear. Uh, Winston Churchill, for example, was really fat and he smoked cigars and drank too much, but he turned out to be a brilliant leader. So because I'm more sophisticated than the average liberal who doesn't really know much about policy, they just go with their emotions, I support Trump because I believe in his policies, and I hate Obama because he was the worst president we ever had. Even though he looked good in a suit, Rick. So, but so you've got all these. It's still a matter of all these. Secret, all right, he secretly conspired with the IRS, right? We, it, it, he's never, it hasn't been proved that he conspired with the IRS. But there, there, were, there were 50 meetings that Lois Lerner had at the White House at the same time that policy was being driven, uh, 
So you're drawn saying that up. if you look at the White House guest list. She was on it 50 times. And, by, and let me just clarify something. IRS department leaders in the past rarely go to the White House, if ever. So something was being coordinated in the White House. So there was a secret thing with the president. And, and mysteriously, uh, it was found by an American court that the IRS had targeted conservative organizations for harassment, something that no American president had, had done. Uh, it, actually, Johnson and Kennedy did it, but they weren't caught, and they impeached uh, Nixon for it. So why wasn't, now, Obama's no longer president. Why hasn't he been charged with anything? Uh, he's, for he's going to. In my opinion, what's happening right now is uh, Barr is trying to figure out who ordered the illegal spying on uh, Trump's campaign, the illegal sabotage and spying of Trump's campaign. They've got it all the way up to the head of the CIA and the attorney general. And they will eventually explain who ordered them to do that. And that's where I think it will get into. So you Obama. think Obama will be indicted? Um, I don't know if it will ever get that far, but I'm sure he's responsible for it. So, but, so all the secret stuff. Like none of the, the, there's the public face of everything, and then there's the secret face of everything. And under the secret, the secret face of Obama is conspiracy.